I'm back for another round of what's in my gear bag with the Africa edition. I did this last year. Things have changed a fair amount since last year. So I thought I'd do another update on uh, what I'm bringing with me to Africa. And primarily, most of my gear is going to fit here in this bag. This is relatively new to me. Uh, I got this uh, early, well, late this fall. And uh, the only time I've used it so far was on my week-long Yellowstone workshop, and it worked wonderfully there. So I decided I'm going to take it to Africa this year. And uh, I'll talk more about this. This is the Gura Gear Kiboko 2.0 30 liter. So this is the biggest version that they make of this Kiboko. And uh, it fits a lot of stuff in it. So this is the bag. I'll show you what all's in here. Um, I'll start with the big stuff. And the biggest, the biggest stuff is on this side. And uh, this is where I'm going to travel with the 402.8 Nikon with the built-in teleconverter. An amazing, wonderful lens. It's fantastic. It fits right in this side. I have the little lens hood cover on it for travel. The, uh, the hood is sitting over here. It's going to ride in my checked bag. I think technically it will fit in here. Actually, I didn't even try. So maybe I'll wedge it in there uh, when I get done here. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it does, it does fit in there. Also, down, the, down this side here, these kind of open butterfly style, I have the uh, Nikon 24 to 200 millimeter lens in, in here as well. And really, these two, these two lenses, I would have a great trip in Africa just with these two. So I'd have the 400 2.8 with have 560 millimeters with a teleconverter. And then with the 2X teleconverter, I have 800 millimeters here as well. So I would have a gap between 200 and 400. But this would be good enough, like if I was just going ultra minimalist there, I would just bring those two. But I'm not going to do that because I like having stuff and uh, options. And so... The, the fill that gap between the 200 and 400. I've got a 100 to 400 millimeter Nikon Z lens here as well. And so this, uh, I, I'm one of the themes here is redundancy that you'll see. Um, so I have a redundancy in the 400 millimeter here. So if one of these lens breaks or I break it more likely, uh, if I was to drop something or break it, I've still got 400 millimeters in two different places. Uh, and similarly, you'll see I'm also going to bring the Nikon 24 to 120 millimeter f4. So I've got a 24 to 200 and a 24 to 120 as well. So I've got some redundancy there. That 24 to 120, since I'm talking about it, is going to ride in my check baggage. And so I wrap it up in these little um, lens wraps. This one's made by Tenba with the picture line logo on it, out of Salt Lake City. Uh, give them a call if you need any gear. Uh, but here, so here's the 24 to 120 that just gets wrapped up in that and rides in the checked bag. So this is, this is really what I need. I've got redundancy here in case something goes wrong. The too small and the too big. And then in addition to that, I'm bringing this lens more as a just in case uh, I brought this last year, and I don't think I used it at all. But this is the Nikon Z14-30 f4. So it's small, and it's light, and it's ultra-wide. And I don't use this lens very often, but there are times when I'm really glad I have it with me because it offers such a unique perspective on things. So I'm going to bring it. Because it is small and light, and I've got the room, I'm going to bring it as well. But otherwise... This is it. I'm keeping it kind of, kind of simple this year. Um, I'm not bringing the 70 to 200 f 2.8. That's kind of the one thing that I'm not bringing out there. That, you know, I could presumably want. Um, anyway, then I've got also in this Gura Gear bag, Nikon Z9, Nikon Z9. 
This one has a quick release L bracket on it, which I'm leaving on here for this trip, not because I'm going to be using a tripod, but I'll get to that in a minute of why I've got that on here. Uh, I'll continue on the what's in the bag here. So that's my gear, and not all this fits in the bag, obviously. Those two lenses don't. Um, but So also in the bag, I've got a bunch of little stuff. I've got a rocket blower, uh, the 2X teleconverter. I just wrapped up in a little lens cloth in there. Stuff that in there. Um, I've got some remote, wireless remote triggers that I'll talk about there in a minute as well. Um, a sack full of extra batteries. And... In all these little zippered compartments, I've got little knickknacks. There's some cleaning cloths in there. There's an extra um, quick release plate if I need it, some extra cards. So all the standard stuff that you would normally be packing, there's plenty of room for all this kind of stuff. And then there's another big zippered pouch here where I've got a little headlamp. Um, I've got a little um, rain cover kind of one of those disposable rain covers uh, and the GoPro. So I don't really plan on vlogging while I'm in Africa, but I did bring the GoPro in case I do find something I want to vlog. And also just for, you know, like when a lion walks right by the car at close range, having a GoPro or something there to film that kind of stuff is really cool. So this is the GoPro Hero 11 with, I think they call this the Volta, which is like a selfie stick with a built-in battery pack to keep it going and a little tripod too that you can kind of set up and, you know, film stuff. So anyway, handy little device, uh, the GoPro and that rides in here as well. Some more little knick-knacky stuff. There's an AirTag in there so I can keep track of that bag. Um, and then on the other side, just more of the same knick-knacky kind of stuff. This is like, uh, Sensor cleaning stuff, some swabs and solution and that kind of stuff. Uh, what else? Oh, so I, I'm traveling with this on the airplane, the way it's configured to fit all this stuff in it. But once I get on location, uh, I'm bringing some extra of the little dividers that go in here. So especially like on this side where the 402.8 lives, uh, I'm going to bring I'm bringing some extra dividers so I can divide that up uh, in a different way. Once I'm on location in the safari vehicle, I'm going to utilize this differently because the 400 will, I'll just be carrying everywhere. So I'll make room for different layout. So I'm just bringing some extra of these so I can change the layout once I actually get to Africa. So that's really cool. That's one of the great things uh, I like about this bag is how kind of versatile and configurable it is. Like right now it's got this big divider down the center, uh, which you can actually just take out and it'll open up the whole bag and you can reconfigure it. You don't even have to have any dividers in here if you don't want. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's about it for the bag. You know, there's just some more little knickknacks over in here. Um, I don't know, just like little tools and little things that I might need. So, that is primarily the camera gear that I'm bringing. I'll show you now a few things that we had talked about. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna maybe try and fit this in after we get done with this. It's gonna be close, but if not, I have room for that in my checked bag. So I had mentioned the, um, oh, sorry. There's a couple of things that are also going in my pack bag. Filters. So I'm gonna bring a polarizing filter and a neutral density filter. And the neutral, it's a variable neutral density filter that I'm bringing so that I can shoot some slow shutter speed work, like the blurry wildebeests as they're running by in the bright sunlight. You know, I might want to get down to a tenth of a second to shoot some blurry, like running animals. And so I need to be able to darken uh, that down a little bit. So I do have a variable neutral density filter and polarizing filters in here. Uh, this is an empty bean bag that we're gonna fill with beans once we get to Africa. And then we rest this over the windowsill and then rest our lenses on these. And this will serve as our primary support for when we're shooting out of the vehicle, which is pretty much all the time. The places we go, we mostly have to stay in our safari vehicles so we don't get 
eaten by lions and leopards and charged by elephants and that kind of stuff. So that'll go in the check bag as well. I'm bringing a small pair of binoculars. And the last piece of photography related equipment I'm bringing is this. It's a monopod with a head on it. Uh, you probably can't see this, but I've wrapped some black gaffer tape, a handful of wraps around that, and some white gaffer tape. So I'm not bringing any rolls of gaffer tape with me, but I've just wrapped enough around the shaft of this monopod that if I need some, I can just peel off a little piece and use it for whatever I need it for. You never know when you're going to need some gaffer tape out there. So that's why I'm bringing my gaffer tape. So the monopod is not really there to use it in the conventional way, but last year I talked about this. Uh, it was an experiment that I was bringing a monopod so that I could actually hang it upside down out of the window of the safari vehicle and drop it down to the ground. And obviously you can't see me, but this can go all the way down and I can be sitting in the safari vehicle looking down at the back of the camera. And as I mentioned, I've got a Z9 here with a um, quick release bracket on it. And here's why. So I can attach this camera to the monopod. I'd have a lens there. And I would be hanging this out the side of the car down low on the ground. I'll have the screen tilted up. So I'm looking down and I can see the screen. And I can see how I'm framing up my images. I can manipulate this and looking at this, and then I have these remote release triggers. So I can sit here and autofocus with a half press and then brr, brr, brr. I can make photos from a low angle out of the vehicle. Just depends how far I want to drop these down, you know? I can take this all the way and set this down on the ground and still be inside the Safari vehicle, still see this, the screen, and be taking pictures. And it was an experiment last year that worked really, really well. So uh, I'm going to do that a lot more this year. And I can do that with this uh, L bracket here. And then I can also do it with a long lens, which surprisingly worked really, really well because we've got, even with the 400-2.8, but I'll just show you on um, the 100-400 here. You just put it in the lens foot like you normally would. And then obviously the camera is attached to it. But the same situation here. I can be shooting with the long lens here as well. So I can get some of that low angle stuff through the grass and, you know, looking up at the elephant. Um, I think that's super important out there is to get a really interesting perspective. And this is one way to do that that worked really well for me last year. So I'm looking forward to doing this some more. This... Um, this setup, last year I brought my big Gitzo, which is much taller and much thicker. Uh, and I had the big really right stuff head on there, which is bigger and heavier. And I don't need that kind of level of support out there. So I went smaller and lighter with both of these pieces. Uh, I've been using this to carry around in the woods this summer as well because it's much smaller and lighter. Um, but that's its primary advantage over the other one. It's just smaller and lighter. So... Anyway, upside down, out the window, it's going to work awesome. And I can do that with the whole setup, any of them, which is great. Uh, what else? I'll show you the, um, the remote triggers. I have two of them. One of them, because I have two cameras, but I also need backups out there, because once you're in Africa, you are on your own in terms of equipment. So this particular thing, I'm going to list all this gear in the description if you want to find this stuff, but this is the little remote. This attaches to the camera into the 10-pin port here on the Nikon Z9. So if your camera has that round 10-pin port, uh, you just plug it right in there, and that's a little wireless receiver, and then this thing has a little button on it, and you half press it to focus, and then click, it'll take pictures. And so I'm just going to have these on permanently once I get there, and this will be riding. And when I need to, I'll have it upside down. I'll be looking at the screen and do, 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 taking the pictures that way. So it's gonna, it worked really well last year. I, I just uh, got some images that I would not have been able to get from that low angle 
um, but working out of the safari vehicles, got to improvise out there. So um, let's see, I guess that's about it. Uh, pretty simple setup this year. It all fits in this, uh, this Gura Gear bag. I could probably make all of it fit, but I'm, like I said, I'm checking these two lenses um, just to keep it so I'm not hauling so much weight on my back to fit that in the overhead compartment. But that's the deal out there for Africa. So I leave in just a few days and now I'm gonna repack it all up and then I'll be done with it until I get to Africa. Then I'll unpack it, rearrange things and uh, then I'll be ready for safari out there. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, check the links in the descriptions for all this stuff and uh, use those links if you feel like buying any of it. Um, some of them, that certainly the Amazon links will be affiliate links. So Amazon will send me a, a little tiny fraction of, I don't know what the percentage is, but they send me a couple of bucks when you buy any of this stuff using those links in the description. So that'll be helpful. Uh, that's it. Have a great day. Uh, this is my current kit. Even here in the Tetons, the only thing that I'm missing out of this kit is the Nikon 70 to 200 2.8, which I'm not bringing, and the little Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera that is shooting this little video with here. So that's it. Keeping it relatively simple. For me, this is relatively simple this year. Uh, and I think it's going to work great. And I look forward to the trip very much. And I thank you all for watching. And... I'll see you in the next video. Take care.